Okay, welcome to the Hangout. This is Kellen Flukiger, and I am part of the Mega Tractors, the most incredible group of Hangout marketers you'll ever meet, this side of, well, I don't know, Antarctica or someplace. But anyway, we're glad to be here, glad to have the opportunity to visit with you today. And today, this Hangout is on something that's really important, and it's near and dear to every business's heart. It's about how to attract your ideal clients and do it quickly, how to find them, if you're a person that holds events, we talk about how we're going to talk with our world-class panel of experts about how to fill events and how to craft offers that make people just anxious to uh, to buy and to be part of your tribe. Most incredible group of hangout marketers you'll ever meet this side of well, I don't know Antarctica or someplace. But anyway, okay. So this is one of the fun parts of hangouts. So I we one of the YouTube things. To, uh, came on and so I muted somebody. Uh, I just muted one of our panelists. So one of the things that you learn about Hangouts is that there are always these fun little technical things. Mics that don't work, cameras that don't work, internet connections that fail, and on and on. And the reason Google named them Hangouts, in my humble opinion, is because it's just that. It's a place where we hang out and talk and we get some good info and have some fun. So those kind of little things that happen, it's kind of a so what deal. They're going to happen who knows, until the platform is perfected and we're Star Trek and we touch a button on our chest and we can communicate anywhere in the world. So here we are, good. And that's what we're going to do. So my personal intro is uh, I, I, will, I will talk more later toward the end. And you'll learn a lot about me as I ask our guests questions. So we have a world-class panel of experts to talk with you today. Gloria, Brad, Jenny, Joy, and myself, Kellen. And we are excited to be with you and to give you the opportunity to learn from our mistakes and learn the good things that we have learned about how to attract your ideal customers, fill your events, craft irresistible offers, and get your message squarely in front of the right people. So if you're ready, I'm ready too. Our first uh, guest is going to be Gloria. I will let her introduce herself uh, when we get ready here. And I need to unmute her, so just give me a second here, and I will... Okay, Gloria, you need to unmute yourself now. Join us today, uh, Gloria, and let's uh, let me ask you some questions. Perfect. Okay, Gloria, I'm, there? I'm, I think I'm there. Can you hear me now? Famous yes, last I'm going to blue box you. There oh, you go. Okay. So you are up now for everyone to see. Gloria Taylor Brown is uh, our world class expert joining us today to talk about this. Gloria, what business are you in? Well, I'm in the business of promoting authors and speakers, and my goal is to help everybody who's got a book or got wisdom inside of them get that out and get it to the world. So I work with uh, people who are professional speakers or just want to be professional speakers and with people who are authors or want to be authors. So um, a lot of people don't realize that if you're an author, you need to be a speaker. And if you're a speaker, you need to be an author. And I work making sure that that transition is easily done. Wow. So you're telling me if I'm a speaker, i got to be an author. And if I'm an author, i got to be a speaker. And you also said something that really ought to appeal to many in the audience, and that is that you, you help wannabes. Is that true? That's true. Uh, generally, they're one or the other, but then I help them become the other. So it... There isn't a publishing house around there, and that includes the one I have in my back closet, that doesn't want my authors out there speaking, because that's the way we publicize our books today. We want them on Hangouts. We want them on a TV. We want them on a, a, um, a radio. We want them talking. Frankly, we want to hear our authors. And so uh, knowing how to talk, knowing how to present your book, how to present your product is incredibly important these days so we really do have to make that transition from thinking about the author who sits in the the you know the ivory tower somewhere and sends his books down and somebody takes them away and he sells like three million books you know uh, that may work for uh, Dan Brown or a few other really big name authors but for most of us it ain't gonna do nothing so, so uh, let me uh, ask a question here. Again, our our um, our subject today is about attracting our ideal clients. And so, you said that your clients are speakers and authors, one or the other, or both, and you help all of them, including the one of East, to become better at either what they're doing or both. So, how do you go about finding uh, your clients 
in this way clients that are in your business? How do you go about finding those people and letting them know what you do so that you can help them? Well, I think for everybody out there who's trying to attract their ideal clients, the most important thing you have to remember is something my granddaddy taught me many, many years ago. My granddaddy collected specimens for the University of Florida um, Anthropology and uh, Zoological Department. And whenever he went out to collect specimens, whether it was gators or moccasins, he said, you got to have the right bait. So whether you're going out to collect authors or speakers or people who are interested in internet marketing or somebody who's interested in you, you doing work for them as a CPA, you want to put out the right bait. You want to put out enough information that they can know that you're the person who's going to solve their problem. Because really, all they want is you to solve their problem. They don't want to be enlightened uh, they're not they entertainments good but they really want their problem solved and whenever they want their problem solved you want them to think of you I mean whenever we think of FedEx you know we think of if I want to have it there absolutely positively overnight I think FedEx nobody else no matter what UPS advertises I think FedEx because they put the right bait out they put out that information in a message, they put it out in the way that they did their work and in the way that they put the program. So one of the most important things is having the right bait that's going to attract the people that's going to come to you. So I have a question. Let me, let me just, uh, let me just sure. ask a question here to help that. You said something I thought that was really important. You said putting out a bait that lets your client know that you are the answer. So let's say someone in our audience uh, sells it doesn't really matter. Organic pet food is a funny example I use all the time, but it doesn't matter if it's that or relationship advice or whatever. Putting out the right bait so that you become the answer is a favorite phrase of mine that I'll talk some more about later. And you said also you become the solution to their problem. What 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 are the maybe one or two um, from your from your long experience ways that people need to think so that they can become the answer for the clients that they're trying to attract? Well, in the example of organic pet food, and I'm familiar with this because I worked with a pet magazine, one of the ways that you want to do is you want to be where people with pets are. You want to make sure that you've got the product there, that you've got the information there that will let them make the decision. So it says, you know, it has a list of ingredients, which none of which are chemicals. Uh, you want to put that information out. And in many ways, attracting your clients is more about how you market yourself than how you go out and sell yourself. What's the difference? Uh, when we sell ourselves, we're going out and we're, you know, calling on the phone and saying, hi, I'm the organic pet food company, and I'd like to tell you about my great new pet food. And if somebody on the other end of the phone has a dog or a cat or whatever, maybe they want to listen, but if they don't, they hang up the phone. If you're marketing yourself, you're putting out the information in every venue you can think of so that people know that you are. And then the people are coming to you. You're not having to going out and find them. Are you going where they are? So what I'm hearing there is uh, make make uh, I'm hearing two things. One is to put out good, accurate, and attractive information, mm -hmm. and the other one is making sure that you go to where they are. Now we just have a few minutes left for your segment, and I want to ask some questions about filling events. Uh, what uh, what um, and about irresistible offers too. So pick one: filling events or making irresistible offers and talk about what your experience has taught you about crafting offers or filling events whichever one is I'll one talk, about talk about filling events because that's something I've run over a hundred events and Beautiful. we uh, I have run them from back in the old days whenever we were sending mail oh my god uh, to today where we're sending email and you know what I don't care which one it is. The most important ingredient, the, the most important tool in getting people's butts in chairs is your phone. Wow! Uh, so talk some more. 
uh, if they have indicated an, an, a, by uh, coming to a, uh, an event, by coming to a preview event, by signing up on an email, by uh, downloading uh, Jenny's great uh, newsletter, if she wants to put them into an event, the best and most effective way to do it is call them and talk to them on the phone. Create a relationship. Uh, it doesn't take that long. It, you can be done in a minute or two. And you can s ask them, are they going to come? And then whenever they say yes, you keep calling them. And you keep calling them until they come to the event. You so it sounds like at the, at the end of the day, uh, the relationship is the word that you said that sounds like the real key here. Yes. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much for your uh, your fantastic advice today. Uh, for both filling events and 100 events is a, is a very impressive uh, amount of events. And I am, yeah, there we go, slow on the trigger here. 100 events is impressive. I certainly haven't run 100 events yet, but I'm on my way. Anyway, great. So our next event up is Brad Codd. Now, Brad is an amazing guy. I understand, and he can he will correct me, I'm sure, because I want to get the number right, but he has run over 1,400, or maybe it's 14 million, I don't know, interviews, and is an expert at helping people use interviews and so forth, and pa packaging them, getting them out, and doing all the things that those of us online, particularly experts and authors and speakers and others, are going to want to do. So, Brad, would you join us here and let us know about yourself? Hey, Kellen, thanks. Uh, well, great to be here. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, we produce over 1,400 interviews. Generated. Brad, you're a little out of focus. Is your little little out of focus? Well, how do I fix that? Shall I move in I don't closer? know. Are you on your laptop? I'm on my laptop. Go ahead. Never mind. Just sit back and roll. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, I'm famous for doing lots of virtual events. So uh, my background is that we produced 1,400 interviews. Uh, generated just over $8 million in sales. And what I'm going to be sharing with folks today is how to structure an interview in a way that is attractive to talented guests. You know, nowadays, people are being invited to be on teleseminar events and shows and live events, and they have a lot to choose from. And so it's a real challenge for them to assess which one is worth their time. So what I'm going to be doing is sharing the exact interview script that we use that gets great sales for our guests uh, as a idea uh, of the, what can be accomplished with this script. We've had more than 12 guests earn over $100,000 of a single one-hour interview, and we've had more than 50 that have generated sales of over $50,000 of a single one-hour interview. So that's the script I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, uh, show you exactly how we do it. Because once you develop a reputation of being someone that can actually deliver the goods, in other words, promote and sell your guests' stuff, then word gets around and then they're going to be knocking on your door asking you to you know, interview them rather than you having to chase them. As Gloria was saying a little earlier, it's kind of like marketing. So you do your investment up front, build that reputation, and then that will just automatically attract the big players to you. And then, of course, life is much, much easier when that happens. So you're going to tell us about how to build an interview that makes people want you, you to be their service provider because you have the reputation of delivering the goods. Exactly. All right. And so to dive right in, the whole idea of doing the interview is you must start with the end in mind. And with me, I do everything with deliberate commercial intent. I know a lot of people do interviews out there, and their intention is just to provide some intangible PR benefit to their guest. And at the end of the interview, they ask the guest to promote a link, and that's pretty much the extent of what it is that they're doing. Um, I look at each interview as an opportunity to sell boatloads of my guests' stuff. And so I structure interviews in a very specific way. And I'm going to go through that now with you guys and share with you exactly how we do that. Each interview is split into three sections. 
And the first section is what we call the content section, that's 30 minutes. The second section is 15 minutes, and that's the process section. And the last section is the Q&A section, and that's also 15 minutes. And so it's a little weird that we split a one-hour interview into those three sections, but we've done that based on experience, and there's a particular characteristics of attendees for a live interview, a 60-minute live interview, and that is when you start your interview, only about 10% of your audience is going to be there. So to do any promotion at all at the beginning of the interview is kind of pointless because 90% of your audience hasn't shown up yet. So what we do in the beginning is we just uh, do fluffy stuff like uh, introduce yourself, introduce your show, introduce your guest, have your guest share with the audience how they got into what it is that they're doing, and then you know, a couple of other little housekeeping things if you want to drive them to a web page where they can interact using chat or uh, they can interact um, by looking at details of a special offer, all that sort of stuff. We take care of all of that during the beginning part of the interview. Then that typically takes five minutes, sometimes a little longer, seven or eight minutes. The rest of the 30-minute segment, the content segment, is pure content. You just want to wow the folks. And as the audience's trust advisor, what you want to do is extract all the good stuff out of your guest and give it to your audience for free. There's a saying that you cannot possibly give away too much good stuff. And during this content phase of your interview, you really want to be your audience's advocate and you want to give them as much good stuff as you can possibly do. You know that you've got about the right balance when your guest starts to squeal and make comments like, wow, yeah, I've never had to give away so much stuff on an interview before. Uh, are you sure you know what you're doing? Because yeah, if we keep going at this rate, people are not going to need to buy my stuff because they will have gotten everything on this interview. Once you get that kind of reaction from a guest, you know you're in a good place. You, you about the right level of uh, giving value to your audience members. So because most of your audience doesn't show up uh, at the beginning of your interview, just focus on content. People who arrive late will just jump in and fall into the conversation. At the 30-minute mark, our experience has been that typically at that point we have 100% of our audience. And so that is the first time that we do some promotion. And don't be coy about it. Make it look and feel and taste like an advert. Explicitly, with no hesitation, no uh, subterfuge, uh, don't try and represented for something that it isn't, just be very clear that you're now taking a moment to promote your guest's stuff, and typically at that point you introduce them to whatever their special offer is. Then the next 15 minutes is a process. Typically this is a meditation, or if your guest is a coach, have them walk through step-by-step step teaching your audience something. Because in the minds of your audience, they really need to reassure themselves before they spend any money on your guest that they're going to get some value out of your guest, that the way that your guest does things actually is going to work for them. And so this 15-minute segment, which we call the process section of the interview, is critically important because this is really where the sale is made. Uh, the beautiful thing about this whole model is we're not using closing techniques, we're not using um, hard sell, we're not using any of the typical tools that salespeople teach you to use in these kind of environments. What we're doing is, and you as the interviewer, your primary responsibility is to build a rapport between yourself and your audience. Uh, sorry, between your guest and your audience. So that when it gets to the end of the process and you invite them to go to the next step and stay in the conversation, the way they're going to stay in the conversation is to buy your guest's package or their special offer. So. This 15-minute process segment is absolutely critical because it will clearly answer in your listener's mind that, yes, this is someone that they can learn from. And if you manage to achieve that during this 15-minute process section of the interview, bang, uh, sale done, uh, you're basically going to get a very high conversion. And I'd probably say that this is the number one reason why we've been able to get over $100,000 in sales of a single one-hour interview is because we really emphasize and we provide a tremendous amount of value and we make it really, really clear that, yes, 
the way that this guest works is compatible with our listener, and our listener can very clearly personally experience that they're going to get value from this guest. Then the third segment is the Q&A section, and believe it or not, it's a little counterintuitive. The Q&A section has nothing at all to do with the uh, guest's questions, or sorry, the listener's questions. Uh, what we do is we use it for all sorts of sales purposes. So between the process section and the Q&A section, we pause again for an advert, and we introduce the listeners to a bit more information about the special offer. And then we go into four reasons why we have a Q&A section. The first one is sometimes in the content section, you get distracted and you go down a sidetrack and you forget to emphasize or you forget to mention something really important uh, that needed to be covered in the interview, but because you got sidetracked, uh, that didn't get covered. So in a Q&A format, you can now loop back and make sure that that important piece of information is introduced to your listener. The second reason why we have a Q&A section is in case you want to emphasize something because it's so important, repetition is a way of emphasizing something's importance. And so what you'll do at that point is share with them uh, in a Q&A format some information that's already been covered. And in the listeners' minds, they will come to appreciate that that's important because you took the time to repeat it. Then the third reason why that uh, you're going to have a Q&A section is to fill up them some time. 60 minutes is incredibly short. And most of the time, you're going to be running out of time. But if you did need to pad your interview to get to the 60-minute mark, then this is an opportunity to use some Q&A-style information format to pad out your interview to get you to the 60-minute mark. And of course, the fourth and the least most important reason um, is to actually answer real listeners' questions. In a sales-type interview like we're doing here, uh, or an interview where the primary intention is to make sales, we typically don't have something as random as live listener questions. Beforehand, we definitely solicit questions, and you might want to do that as well, and format it in such a way that it's representative of the kind of questions listeners are going to ask, and then you'll present that however you want to do it. Um, so that's basically the three segments, content, process, and Q&A. And then at the end of the interview, that's when you have your call to action. So the trouble is at the end of the interview, uh, about 50% of the people that were there at the 30-minute mark are gone. There's about a 50% attrition between the 30-minute mark and 60-minute mark. And we've solved that problem. Uh, typically, at the end of our interviews, we still have 100% of the people listening. And of course, the more people you have listening when you, you know, give the call to action, the more money you're going to make. And the way that we keep people on the call is that we tease them with a thank you gift, something that they're going to get for free just by staying on the interview. We don't tell them they're going to get it at the end of the interview. Right at the beginning of the interview, in the introduction phase, in that I said one of the things you can do is some administration. Well, one of the administration things you can do is tell them that there's going to be a thank you gift just for them being on this call today. At the 30-minute mark, you're going to give them the name of that thank you gift. At the 45-minute mark, you're going to give them a short description of what that thank you gift is. Then at the 60 minute mark, first, before you try and do the call to action, you're going to give them that thank you gift, um, triggering the law of reciprocity. If you've read any of uh, Robert Cialdini's work, give them something first that dramatically increases your chance that they'll give you something in return. And so if you give them the thank you gift at that point, no tricks, no subterfuge, just make it very clear and straightforward for them to get that thank you gift that you've been teasing them with. And then at the end, now you do your call to action. And once you've done that, what you want to do is end the call abruptly. You do not want to answer so many questions. You do not want to go into a Q&A session that completely satisfies everything that a person wants to know about the topic that you've just been talking about for the last hour. You deliberately, intentionally want to leave what in NLP they call an open loop. And what you want to do is abruptly end the call. And you can preface it with something like, gee, you know, we could talk for another hour or two or three. There's so much good information that we could get into in this call, but we're out of time. So 
thank the guest and then abruptly end the call. That way people are left with, listeners are left with a feeling of incompleteness and the only way that they're going to get that itch scratched is to go and order the special offer package. So that's basically the way we do interview scripts. As you can see, there's no selling at all. It's all about building rapport between your guest and your audience and the folks that want to remain in the conversation at the end of the interview are the ones that are going to step up and buy the special offer package that your guest has available for them. So, Kevin? So, Brad, a couple questions here. Interviews. Uh, it, it's perfect. So, I just want to know, is what you just did, is that the content piece or the process piece or the CT? <laughs> sorry, q and A. I'm joking. So, one question. In the, in the timing when you said after 30 minutes, uh, at the beginning, tell them it's going to be a gift, and at 30 minutes, you said you tell them the link. What did you say you do at 30 minutes? Uh, no, you're teasing them with the thank you gift. You only give them the link at the 60-minute mark. Okay, so fine. At the beginning of the interview, you tell them they're getting a thank you gift. At the 30-minute mark, you tell them the name of the thank you gift. At the 45-minute mark, you give them a name of the gift again, plus a short description of what it is, typically the number one benefit. And then at the 60-minute mark, that's when they're going to get the actual link to go and get the thank you gift. All right. Well, that's fantastic. That's great, uh, great stuff from Brad. I uh, really appreciate that. And if you're taking notes, you ought to be. Uh, a, a wonderful way to structure interviews. And I, I thought it was funny. The things that I wrote down here was the 30 minutes about making the guy bleed, uh, making the guest bleed. That's where you prove that the stuff is really cool. And then after the uh, the process piece is how you prove that it really works. So I wrote down really cool and really works as my part, as my notes for that little part. Thank you, Brad. That was excellent. So our next guest is going to be Jenny Hamby, who has massive experience as a copywriter for some really heavy names, uh, and she will tell you all about them herself. But uh, I am really excited to listen to, again, how to attract your ideal customers, how to fill events, how to craft irresistible offers from the point of view of an expert and long-established copywriter. Jenny, welcome to your section here. Well, hey, Kellen. Thank you. It is so great to be here. And yes, I do work with some really awesome clients. I get to work with people like Jack Canfield, John Asraf, T. Harbecker, Peak Potentials Training, as well as lots of you know lesser-known experts, the future stars of the different industries that I work with. They are loads of fun to talk, you know, to work with, and I'm really thrilled to be here to share a little bit about what I've learned writing copy. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, when it comes to copywriting, um, copywriting is the art of writing the words that bring people to you. Those words can be used on a sales page, in emails, they can be used on postcards, they can be used basically any different way. So it could even be in a sales script or a Google Hangout script. And the way that you craft your message is what really attracts people to you. So I do have some great tips to help you attract people to your whatever you're selling. I work a lot with event copywriting, so filling seminars, workshops, teleseminars, webinars. But really the tips that I'm going to share with you apply to any sort of offer. So if you're marketing a coaching service or even, you know, you're a veterinarian and you're trying to promote your practice, whether you're marketing a product, the same tips for attracting your audience will work regardless of what you're selling. So the first thing to do, I think the most important tip is be really clear in your copy who it is that you're trying to attract because the more hooks you can put into your copy to make people say, oh, that sounds like me, that's what gets people to sit up, take notice, and respond to you. The place I always start is specifics, really, because I think one of the challenges is we want to maximize our sales, so we want the copy to appeal to as many people as possible. But trying to make your copy appeal to everybody means it often appeals to nobody because it sounds like everybody else. It's really generic sounding. So when you're writing your copy, think about how you can target it to different audiences. So for example, today's call is about how to attract your ideal audience. That's a great topic for any business owner because everybody wants to know how to tra attract their ideal client, right? But if you tweak it and add a little bit of specifics, so how to attract the ideal audience to your seminar? How do I attract the ideal audience to your coaching practice? 
how to attract the ideal audience to your hotel. You know, how do you fill your hotels, hotel rooms? Just by adding those specific words that can in the titles, it can make your copy more appealing. And that's true even if you're teaching the same principles to the audience, regardless of who's attending, if you tweak your copy a little bit and try to target it to the different audiences, it will make it more appealing. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So that when you're going forward and you're writing copy, even if you're serving multiple audiences, as you're writing your copy, you can start to target your campaigns using words like that. So tip number one, be specific when you're talking about your audience. Give them titles or other descriptive words that will help them say, yeah, raise their hand and say, yes, that sounds like me. Then the second tip for making your copywriting more appealing is think about what their pain is. What are they struggling with? What keeps them up at night? And the reason you want to think about that is, number one, it will grab them by the throat and say, you know, yes, that this is absolutely what I'm struggling with. I need help with it. Please tell me the answer. And then, of course, your event or your product will be the answer that they're looking for. Um, so think about the pain that they're in. What are their frustrations? What are the challenges? And if you can go a step further and start to think about how do they feel? Are they frustrated? Are they worried about meeting payroll? Are they ashamed of how their business is doing? The more you can tap into that pain, it will resonate with them. It will make them say that, yes, this is something I should pay attention to because obviously this, this person, this expert who's marketing, understands what situation I'm in. And then in your copy, you can develop that conversation further and talk to them, I know why you're struggling. I know why this is a problem. It's okay here. There's a solution. And that solution happens to be my event, my service, my product. So talk about their pains. We have targeted through title or other description. Target them by identifying the pain that they're in. And then the third tip is talk about the benefits. What is it that they're looking for? What are they wanting? Are they wanting more butts in their seats? Are they trying to increase their revenue? Are they looking for ways to build passive income? Do they want to fill their coaching practice? Are they looking for more patients? Think about what your clients are telling you, what they want to have. And if you work that into your copy, it's just another layer that you can add to attract people to you. Then once you have it, you're like, what do you do with all of this? So. Number one, if you're writing copy for events, that's what I do quite often, of course, have a section that targets, answers that question, who should attend? Because what's going on in your client's head is, is this, a right, is this event right for me? Or is this product right for me? Is this service right for me? So have a section in your marketing copy that addresses that specifically. This is who should attend this event. This is who this product is designed for. And you can put your titles in right there. And then I like to go a step further and include lists of the pain, the challenges that they're dealing with, and lists of the benefits that they're after. And again, this works with products just as well. So are you looking for these, these benefits? You know, do you also want to achieve X, Y, and Z? Incorporate a list. Same thing goes with the pain that you're dealing with. So are you struggling with one or more of these challenges? Or which of these challenges are you struggling with? And then present a bulleted list of the different struggles that you've heard about. And then at the end, you, you tidy it up with a, a simple statement like, if you're struggling with one or more of these, this event is right for you, or this product would be great for you. So give them those sections. So because the reason I like to do bulleted lists is it's very easy when you're scanning through copy to just zoom in and, and touch in and see those things jump out at you. So other than the sections in the bulleted list, then you can also start to incorporate it elsewhere in your copy. So when you have an introductory section or you have transitions or even in your email openings, you can start to work those bits into your conversation as well. And then finally, you incorporate it into headlines, subheadlines, anything that is jumping out on the page. And then my last tip is, you know, to help really attract the ideal audience, we're always looking for social proof, right? We want to see that other people have gone down this path before and they survived and they've thrived. So incorporate lots of testimonials and case studies. And the more you can incorporate a variety of testimonials and case studies, the greater your chance of getting the right ones in there that will appeal to different members of your audience. So look at all the different job titles you're serving or all the different industries that you're serving. 
look through all the testimonials that you've received and solicited, and then try to match them up. So if you have CEOs and CFOs, look for people who have given testimonials who are CEOs and CFOs, because people will pay attention. They're looking in those case studies not only for the results that other people have achieved, but also to say that, you know what, that person is in the same situation I am. So if they said it and they had great results, then chances are pretty good that I'll get good results as well. So the five tips to recap are be specific in your copy, identify the pain, identify the benefits that your audience wants, um, incorporate it throughout your copy, including having specific sections devoted to those key areas, and incorporate as much social proof as you possibly can. Well, that is fantastic. So uh, I just want to reiterate, I took plenty of notes there also. I hope that all of you watching this did, because copywriting is sometimes something that's really scary, and you feel like you either suck at it or that you probably suck at it and you don't know it, and so someone like Jenny, who has had boatloads of experience for some very, very heavyweight clients and done it very successfully to fill events, which of course is something that many, many people need to do, and if you're not filling events, even if you're an offline business, what are you doing? You're filling your doors, you're bringing in clients, patients, and others. So I have clients, some clients that are professionals and doctors and other kinds of people that have, you know, substitute patients for clients, that kind of thing. So I love that. Think specifically about who they are. Uh, explore that pain. Make a list of those pains. And I love the bulleted list because that's easy to use everywhere. A bulleted list of the benefits and then put it all over in your copy and then of course that uh, key social proof to prove that others, I like the way uh, that Jenny said that, been down that road and survived and thrived. A yes. fantastic way to describe that. Uh, you know, so and I thank have, you. Great. Yeah, I have one other tip. When it comes to creating those things and getting the points, obviously you know your audience. So you can sit down and just start with yourself. But a really great and easy way to write your copy is interview your clients and tape record it and then transcribe the interviews. And then when you go through it, you can just pull their words out and plunk it right into your copy. And the reason it works so well, not only does it save you time and it saves you a little bit of mental stress trying to figure out you know, what will work with them, but when you peel their words out of a transcript and put it into your copy, they read it and think, oh my gosh, that sounds just like me. Yes, this is exactly what I want. Because you're using their, their own words. You're entering the conversation in their head already. So, fantastic advice from a wildly experienced or incredibly experienced copywriter. I like that person about, uh, that point, not person, that point about entering the conversation in their minds because then of course it sounds like them. So thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, next on our list of experts, we have Joy. Joy Flukiger uh, runs a, a, an incredible business and has a lot of experience also in attracting clients. And this is gonna be a completely different thing because her business is not online. Her business is, uh, it is online, but it is not information products, it's actual physical products. So this is gonna be different. Joy, I'll uh, introduce you here. Uh, go ahead and tell us about your tips and tricks for getting the right clients and all that kind of good stuff. Hi there, can you hear me okay? No, we can't hear the microphone at all. The mic's not on. Uh, let me... Uh, uh, is it muted over the top of the screen? Roll over your your face and see if there's a microphone mute at the top. It shows that it's unmuted. There it is. Go ahead. Ah, yay! Okay, so hi, I'm Joy. Um, yes, I have. I help Kellen with his business doing. Um, funnels, sales funnels, and uh, all of the internet graphics, all that kind of stuff. Because my background is in, um, <clears throat> I have a background in art and design. I studied art and design at university, as well as programming. So um, I guess it's a unique skill set in that I do the art and the technical part. So my business offline, which is actually online, is I'm an antiques dealer. So I've been doing this for a number of years and have a very successful online antiques business. Um, and also in helping Kellen with some of his, um, with, with his um, filling events and, and doing all of the, the back end work, um, you know, we provide a, a unique skill set to people. So I made a couple of notes here um, about how I find clients and get clients to um, 
you know, come to my online store as well as helping Kellen filling his events and with customer getting you know his clients as well. So I'm I'm big about you know I'm a very social person so I talk to everyone. I mean I you know at the the checkout in the grocery store if we're you know at a, at an event on an airplane and you know I've been very successful in getting clients that way. Um, part of the things what I what I do is um, when I get um, customers to buy or customers who didn't or who didn't buy from me I always ask them why did they buy or why didn't they buy and like Jenny had said earlier that's one of the best ways also to get uh, find out what your customers are saying or what your clients are saying to you get it from them directly so that's one of the the tips I guess that I use as well is ask them directly why did you buy and you know if you if you didn't if this wasn't for you at this time why didn't you buy like what would have made it was it price was it you know whatever it is there could be a whole host of reasons so we can make things up but I'd rather hear it from them directly um, one of the other you know social proof um, everybody has spoken about the importance of social proof and getting testimonials now there's people out there who probably you know if they're just starting out they don't have a lot of that so what would you do if you don't have a lot of testimonials some people don't have thousands of case studies you know Brad has 1400 interviews and Gloria has done a hundred events and Jenny has a long history with copywriting with you know some very very famous people but what if you don't have that what do you do you know you start where you are you get a testimonial from where you can so if you're at an event and you're speaking to someone and you gave someone a tip you just turn your phone around and say hey would you mind just giving me a one minute or a two minute you know what this did for you you have a testimonial right there that you can use um, you know so you can start simple and build from that uh, part of the other thing too especially with my um, online offline business with antiques is customer service you know we talk about how um, the importance of keeping that customer and making them so happy that they're going to um, refer people to you I get a lot of referrals for my antiques business lots of referrals because while my prices are more expensive I'm not you know the, I'm not you know the cheapest uh, gig in town or online or but I provide I think some of the best customer service around I will go above and beyond and backwards and forwards for my customers even if it costs me more it doesn't matter I want the experience to be seamless so there's no they don't have to worry about anything and that you know is also relevant to online marketing you don't need customers or your clients to have to find the links or it doesn't work and what do I do and make them th go through all of these hoops make it easy for people because people do want to buy from you so let make it easy for them to give you that money so customer service um, talking to people everywhere starting with those um, small one-minute testimonials if you can for doing online marketing the other thing that I use and I'm really big on uh, with social proofing is Facebook you know when you look at the average um, salary of a Facebook user is you know 60,000 or 40,000 or something where compared to LinkedIn is 120,000 but still you know millions and millions probably billions people still are on Facebook um, with an older demographic you know people know how to use Facebook so they're loath to really get off of it but I find that simple things such as commenting on people's posts you know it all goes back to know like and trust why people will buy from you they know you they like you they trust you they'll buy from you so commenting on other people's posts is important yes you see a lot of things with cats on roller skates and all that kind of stuff commenting on other people's posts liking other people's posts or pictures um, but it has to be in a genuine and authentic way as well um, friending people looking who their friends are and making some sort of strategic uh, not strategic calls but you know make doing things with a strategy in mind to get um, a bigger social engagement so what I do is I reach out to approximately 10 new people a day on Facebook so I reach out to them I comment on their posts I look and see what they're doing um, I see if it's actually a good fit for me or if it's somebody that I may be interested in getting to know and I start commenting that I, I 
befriend them and I ask them, you know, hey, we have some number of people in common, let's talk, maybe there's something that we could work with together. And I've been very successful in, in that, using that strategy and have gotten clients that way. So that's, I'm, I'm really big on Facebook for that. But there's also a couple of other things that maybe some people have forgotten about and that's MySpace and something called Second Life. So MySpace, we thought all, it was all dead in the water. It's not. There are millions of people that are still on MySpace. You should go check it out. MySpace.com. You can search, um, you can micro-target and micro-niche these things to age, to different um, uh, different types of music that people like so you can really target down so MySpace is still one place that I think is pretty viable and the other one is called Second Life it's a game but you can sell products on it so maybe the game is virtual your avatar is virtual but the money that comes in your pocket into your PayPal account that's real um, there's Lon Safko he's huge in the internet marketing world he um, is really big on the advantages uh, of using something like Second Life. And as a matter of fact, Kellen and I were at an event a couple of months ago where uh, it was a PBS special that was filmed here in Phoenix. And it's showing tomorrow night on PBS, but I don't know if it's quite, I don't know if they're going to show it nationwide or if it's just in the Phoenix area, but uh, we're in the front row so you won't miss us. But that's, those are just a couple of other areas that maybe people aren't, hadn't quite thought of before if they're looking for something new to you know, fine. So I've been finding that pretty successful. Kellen? All right. Well, thank you uh, very much for, for that. And that uh, that is really interesting about uh, the other, I'm going to mute this microphone because there we go. Uh, the other uh, things like Second Life, it was really interesting to hear Lon, who has written a big, huge book on social media, uh, to hear him uh, describe that because he actually had a virtual lecture room where he came and gave virtual speeches. He, he's, he also teaches classes at university. And people would come in there and use his virtual lecture and conference room and he has a virtual store in there but he sells actual internet products and information products. And so it's really funny to hear him describe that yeah, the room's virtual, the people's virtual, the conference is virtual, you have an avatar and everything else, but guess what? The money is real. So that was really interesting uh, in terms of a, a, an opportunity to do uh, to do something and, and attract a certain you know, kind of demographic that likes the kinds of games. So I'm I'm the last uh, guest today, and I'm going to talk a little bit about something I call the money triangle. Okay, uh, marketing has changed. Okay, it used to be, and some of the old methods are still in full force and work. But we used to do everything on yellow pages, for example, and newspaper ads, and and then we had television ads, and you know, there's a million TV stations now, and they're still advertising on TV. And the Yellow Pages are mostly gone or dinosaur doorstop. They still exist, but I haven't looked inside of one for at least 15 years. And I know lots of people like me, and then if somebody's going to hit me over the head with one at the next event and say they still use them, that's okay. But what we have is we have social media. We have Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, stumbled upon, and a big long list that I'm not going to even pretend to list. The question that I have is, how do you show up online? So when a person comes to me with marketing help, I run a, I have a program called Speed to Profit Marketing, speedtoprofitmarketing.com. And when I get a client or a potential client that comes to ask me anything about marketing, my first question is, well, how do you find your clients right now? And the first, most answer that they're proudest of is, well, word of mouth and referral. And that's great. And that is a great way to do it. My next question is, do you want to augment word of mouth because word of mouth used to just mean people you met in the grocery store, church, down the street, PTA and that kind of stuff. Word of mouth now includes social media. It includes it in a big way and if you're not using social media to be your word of mouth to spread your prospects, I mean from your clients to spread your good word, then you're missing an enormous opportunity and leaving tons of money on the table. So the money triangle in speed to profit marketing is about three things. And I'm going to tell you very specifically today how to use the money triangle because if you touch all the corners of the money triangle, then you get the big dollar signs inside. Okay? The first corner of the money triangle is to show up online, and that means through the social media, consistently with engaging material in the language of your pain. I'm sorry, the language of the pain of your prospect.
uh, we had we heard a lot of good instruction from uh, Jenny about talking in the language or the pain of the prospect. What are their pains? So this is the same kind of thing. So if you write posts, so for example, I talk about marketing. I talk very specifically in my posts about the pain of not having enough clients, of speaking to the wrong people, of not doing good customer service or taking care of your customers. I speak specifically to that pain or the other pains that someone might be having in their business when they're not getting enough clients or repeat business. And sometimes it's not, and it, in, it isn't always with a call to action. Again, it's like Brad was talking about, it's very smooth and it's just to engage. So engagement is the first key. And in that corner of the triangle, it is speak often and freely in the language of your prospects, pain, or pleasure. So if you do that in a consistent way on, across social media, then you, get, you start to gather a tribe. People know what to expect from you. You show up consistently, and then they begin to establish a relationship with you because you are speaking in the language of their pain or pleasure. The second part of the triangle I call the three Ds. Learn to discover, develop, and deliver your personal story. There's a reason that reality TV is so popular, and there are dozens and dozens and dozens of reality shows from fixing houses to hunting alligators to people's you know, relationships and all kinds of reality shows, and there's a reason for that, and that is we like to, we like to have authenticity. We like to feel like things are in real life. It's, it's no... Uh, coincidence, excuse me, that six of the Oscar-nominated movies this last week were true stories, okay? We are in an age right now when authenticity, reality, and really knowing someone instead of just imagining is key. So if you start to think about what your specific advantage is, quite often it comes down to your personal story your personal experience, the obstacles that you overcame, how you did it, uh, what happened to you during the process, the hero's journey that's sometimes called. And you know, again like Brad said, sometimes you feel like, oh I'm giving away too much stuff. You can't, you can't give away too much stuff. If your personal story contains triumphant as well as despair, disparaging moments or moments of sorrow or struggle, that's great. And it doesn't matter how much of that you give away. The number of clients I can serve is limited. I cannot serve a million or a billion clients in any effective way unless I have a little ebook that goes out to a lot of people. That's fine. So you can't give it away too much. And the one thing that makes you different as an organic pet food seller or a relationship coach or whatever else is your personal approach to it. And when you do that loud and proud, then people will know that you resonate with them in a particular and special way. And that goes right back to what Jenny was talking about, about entering the conversation in their mind. So the more specific, the more vulnerable and more authentic you can be in discovering, developing and delivering your personal story, the more powerfully you will connect with your tribe, attract them to your events, and um, <clears throat> attract your tribe online around you. I know that personally, that's what I do, and I get clients that way, and that's how I feel my practice. The third piece of the money triangle is uh, about video. We love to see things happen. Now, may, most of you may know this, but you may not. YouTube is now the largest search engine. It was slated to overtake Google right after the first of the year, and I haven't seen exactly if it has or not, but it either is or almost is. What that means is when we look stuff up online, we prefer to see a video. We look stuff up on YouTube to Google it. Now, Google's the verb these days, right? That's how we look it up. So that means if you as a business aren't on YouTube, with video, if you don't have video on your website, if you don't engage with video in the language of the prospects, pain or pleasure, discover and develop and deliver your personal story in an engaging and powerful way through video, then again your, your business is going to be in a decline mode because the use of video and the way people search for it in video is in an incline. So those are the three points of the money triangle, which is consistently appear with regular engaging content in the language of the pain or pleasure of your prospect. The second point is to discover, develop, and deliver your personal story. And the third part is learn to effectively engage and create authentic relationships through video. And that is, again, a skill that you can learn, like learning to be 
not afraid of public speaking and so forth. So the money triangle is a key piece for how to attract your tribe, how to engage them, and how to draw them both to your events and to your bank account. And that's the thing I wanted to share with you is the money triangle and how I use that in my program called Speed to Profit Marketing. That comes to a conclusion for the guests that we had on our hangout today. I'm going to take a look and see if there's anyone that has put any questions. So hang with me here for just a minute while I check a couple of places in chat boxes and other places on the event to see if there are questions that we should be addressing here and if they were addressed to anyone. Okay, so Okay, someone asked me a question here, a URL for the program that I was just talking about. Yes, um, th there's two URLs, but I'll just give one. www.speedtoprofitmarketing.com And I also have an event that I'm actually holding, and so there's a special one. It's the same thing, speedtoprofitmarketing.com forward slash event uh, that talks more about it. But that's that's the URL for the one that I was just talking about. Are there other questions? Let me take a look and see. All right, so I see a question here in the chat box that talks about offline bricks and mortar businesses. Uh, and so I'm going to talk for a second about that, and then I'm going to uh, all of the all of my illustrious panel of guests are muted. So I'm going to say one little thing here, and then I'm going to look for raised hands for more about that. Offline businesses are exactly the same. Your goal is to attract and make the customer feel like uh, they, they need you, they know you, and they can trust you. Where are your offline, or where are your customers, even if your business is pool supplies, I don't care, where are they looking for you? They're looking for you on the internet. And so, excuse me, everything that we've talked about, about showing up on the internet, languaging and attracting them and everything else applies because they're not looking for you in flyers, mostly a few, they're mostly looking for you online. So I would say that without question or exception, everything that we have talked about applies to businesses uh, on uh, that are offline businesses, bricks and mortar. And I would also give you a, a real encouragement because there are so many businesses that right now are not very effective in their presence online. And so if you're an offline business, and you're looking to increase your revenue and increase your sales, getting a head start and getting an advantage to marketing online in the effective ways you've been taught today is really incredible. All right, does anybody in the panel have something to say? Wave your hand and, and I will or unmute yourself and give your tips to our audience. No takers, okay. Oh, Brad, go ahead. Uh, Kellen, yes, I just want to thank all the listeners for watching our program today. Uh, it's been a, a real pleasure. Thanks for getting this all organized. Uh, this was a project that we took on when we all attended the Hangout Marketing Intensive that Alex Mendozian put on down in Oceanside, and it's been a quick way for us to accelerate our adoption of Google Hangouts to get our information out to folks. So just a quick recap on the presentation that I gave. The obvious way, reason for doing interviews with big people is because when you're working with a big name person, you're going to sell lots of stuff. And by now, I didn't state it before, but it, it should be obvious that you get 50% of the money that the interview generates. So right out of the gate, that makes doing interviews with heavy hitters very desirable. Uh, the next thing to take into account, and something I didn't touch on at all, it's just assumed, is that the money that you get from doing an interview with a famous person is fantastic, but what is even better than that is the audience that you attract, because typically what will happen is those folks will introduce you to their audience. They'll invite their audience to come listen to the interview, and when that happens, those people then get added to your database, and then forever, those people are on your mailing list, and you can actually work with them long after the interview is over. Uh, and just to put it into perspective of what's possible, you know, we consistently get 1,000 people, 2,000 people added to our database every time we do an interview. The best we've ever done was when we interviewed Wayne Dyer. He in invited his audience to come and listen to our interview, and we had 15,000 people sign up in one day. So you know, this is the potential of what's going on 
when you use these kind of tools to engage, um, use audio interviews or use video interviews to work with an expert. Soon the art of war, yeah, he taught killed with a borrowed knife. If you don't have the credibility, you don't have the reputation yet, start working with people that already do have it. They've already done all the hard work finding your ideal customer. So when you do a joint venture with them to promote what they're doing and they invite their audience to listen to the interview, that is immediately attracting all of those ideal customers that of yours that are already in their audience. They've already put in all the hard work to find them and then they just effortlessly flow into your database and become part of your audience. A tremendously powerful strategy that we're talking about here. So just wanted to take a moment to emphasize that. And so, Kellen, thanks a million for being the host. I think this is... Absolutely. So I want everybody to unmute themselves and say a last word. Brad, one question that did come in is, what do you, what does your service charge when you, if someone comes and wants to do an interview with you? Like if someone saw this and said, wow, I want Brad to interview me, what would you do? You, are you willing to discuss that or is that something you don't want to talk about on, on the... Well, hangout? sure. Um, it's the standard formula. We'll interview anyone for free because the way that we make our money, we're so confident that we're good at what we're doing here is that whatever we money make money we make promoting the interview and promoting the special offer of the person that we're interviewing, we split that money 50-50 at the end of the interview. It's a standard arrangement. That's how most joint ventures are done, if not you know, the lion's share, you know, well into the 90% range of all joint ventures on the internet are 50-50 split revenue of whatever the joint venture activity produces. Interviews are no exception. So, yeah, we don't charge up front uh, to interview someone because we're very confident that we're going to do a good job and get great results, and then we just take the traditional 50% JV commission on the back end, and we do very, very, very well. So if you want to learn more about this, uh, you're sure we'll do interviews with you and that sort of stuff, but if you just want to learn how I do interviews, go to www leveragingyourinterviews.com uh, that's singular sorry leveragingyourinterview.com uh, what I'm be building there is a membership site but in the interim what you can do is get access to all of the knowledge that I have accumulated over the last four or five years on how to do these interviews and every week I spend somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes just talking about one special issue one special idea uh, and it's a gold nugget that we've figured out over the years and just progressively over the next year my intention is to once a week give away some secret source, some secret that helps us to be successful and that's completely free so just go to www. Oh, I can't read my thing here leveragingyourinterview.com Okay, that's www.leveragingyourinterviews.com. It looks plural to me, although that's a little bit Greeked out. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Anybody have any last words? Gloria, Jenny, Joy? Well, I'd like to say a last word and say um, thank you very much, Kellen. You have done a marvelous job of, co of corralling these cats on this uh, interview. And um, Brad, you know, as always, you are brilliant. Jenny, you're incredible. Joy, you've done a brilliant job, and I think that you have all been done fabulous, even the people that didn't manage to show up. Uh, we have, um, this has been our first group uh, hangout for all of us, and I think it's been done very well, and I really want to applaud you. And one of the things that I know is, you know, I've worked with a lot of bricks and mortar uh, businesses, and I'll tell you something, if you get video on your website, your engagement with your audience will go up some say as much as 57 percent and some people say as much as 57 times now that's a really important thing and, and getting back to Kellen's point about how you can get speed to profit if you want to get somebody to pay attention to you get yourself on YouTube get yourself on a hangout and we'd love to talk to you about doing just that all right. Any other comments? Last uh, last call here. Oh, Jenny, you're gonna unmute yourself. Yep. Hey, Kellen. I just wanted to tie back to something that you said about how engagement and authenticity is so important now, as we're 
swinging from the me back to the we as we learned at the Hangout Marketing Intensive. And the point I want to offer to you for your copywriting is don't get so hung up in the exact right way that things need to be written. What I've learned, especially the past few months, is the more that you reveal about yourself and what's going on for you and your experience, the more your audience really connects with you. So don't feel like you have to have it look polished and professional in a certain way. Really open up and let yourself shine through as well. It's funny, I heard someone say once, people connect more with our messes than our successes. So I guess I would uh, use that as an agreement with, with what you're saying here, Jenny. I absolutely agree. <laughs> so true, right? <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you. And uh, those of you that watch this later on YouTube, yes, this is a group that was assembled at Alex Mondosian's Hangout Marketing Intensive, a fantastic program teaching about Hangouts and all of the good stuff. Uh, Joy, you have final comments? Um, can you hear me? Yep. Ah, well, okay. You know, I really enjoyed this. Brad, Gloria, Jenny, um, and Kellen. The tips on this Hangout were absolutely incredible. I'm going to look at the camera now, right? Where am I looking? Um, you know, incredible. Jenny, with her amazing experience working with all of these uh, top internet marketers and coaches, it's just incredible. Uh, Brad, with all of the interviews that he's done and, and how to form a 60-minute interview, and Gloria, with her amazing experience. I mean, this has just been one of those events that have just been absolutely killer. And I'd like to talk to each and every um, one of you at some point, too. So thank you again, and I really enjoyed it. And I, um, somebody asked, you know, uh, my URL. I sell most off, mostly on eBay. My store is Joy's Jewels, Jewels with a Z. Joy's Jewels. And I do that because why? It's the biggest marketplace in the world. I mean, you know, no sense going to the minor sites when, you know, you have the biggest marketplace in the world right at our fingertips. So I just wanted to thank everybody and thank Kellen for hosting this. So it was, I had a blast. Okay, signing off then for our group and for all of you. I hope a million people watch this and let's all as Yay. a group promote this and uh, have fun. So we'll talk to all of you later. Bye. Hey, bye.